Hi everyone. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at live connection with machine connectors. Machine connectors sit in between Fusion 360 and your machine tool. They allow you to stay better connected and ensure that no data is wasted. Live connection can show you what toolpath is currently running on your machine tool. We can import inspection data back in real time as it's happening, and even alarm and pause the machine if we find any points are out of tolerance. You can even combine live connection with Fusion 360's part alignment for unattended workflows by setting up automatic approval and reject criteria so you can stay confident in the quality of the parts coming off your machine tool. So let's head over to Fusion 360 and see how do we set all this up. Before we get started, this functionality is still in preview. So there are two feature flags to enable, live machine data collection and machine connector. Much like simulation models, machine connectors are linked to the machine. There are two ways to link a machine connector to a machine. The first way is to select a predefined machine from our library. We can now filter for machines that are connector enabled. Select your machine, move this over to your local library and save the simulation file. As the connector is a separate application, you have to allow its permission to run and choose a local location for it to be stored. The machine connector will now automatically run as a check to ensure it's downloaded and located correctly. You can go ahead and close this. If you ever need to manually open the machine connector, you can do so by clicking Run Machine Connector. As the machine connector will automatically start when required, you should only need this for initial setup or fault finding. The second way of linking a machine connector is to manually add it to an existing or new machine configuration. First, you'll have to download the connector from our online post library. Any post processor that supports machine connectors will have the connector download available. You can now create your new machine, enable machine connectors as a capability, and head over to the new machine connector tab. This is where you can specify the location of the machine connector that you have previously downloaded. When you have specified the location, Running the connector for the first time will now link the connector to the machine. You can see the connector icon turns green to show this link has been established. Regardless if you have chosen a machine from the library or added it manually to one of your own, we'll need to set up the connection settings. We have to think of this as a two-part connection. The machine connector sits between Fusion 360 and the machine. So let's first define how Fusion 360 connects to the machine connector. We have to define the IP address and port number of the connector. The IP address is the location of the connector. So if it's running on the same PC as Fusion, you can leave this as the default IP address 127.0.0.1. If it's running on a different PC, then enter the IP address of that PC here. Next, the port number defines the application. So this is the machine connector itself. The port number can be found on the machine connector. We default to 50,000, but if this port number is already in use, you can change it just ensure that both numbers match. This is all we have to do for the connection from Fusion 360 to the connector. Now for the settings to go from the connector to the machine tool. In the Has connector, we have the choice between Ethernet or Serial Connection. Our machine is Ethernet, so that's what we'll be setting up today. Similar to earlier, we define the location of the machine with the IP address, and then the port number chosen on our machine. We need to also define one more piece of information, and that is where the data will be stored while it's being transferred back to Fusion. We call this the data buffer, and it uses machine's macro variables. We need 50 empty macro variables for our connection. Let's have a look at our controller and see where we find all this information. Looking on our Haas CNC controller for example, the IP address of the machine can be found on the settings page, Network Wired Connection. The port number can be found on the settings page, Miscellaneous, setting 143 Machine Data Collect, our machine, this is 5051. The macro variables are from the current command key and macro vars tab. 
Here we can scroll through and find 50 macro variables that have no data, so are free for us to use. We will use 10,100 as our starting address. This information is now entered back in the machine configuration page in Fusion 360. We have now set up both sides of the connection. Fusion 360 to the machine connector, and then the machine connector to the machine itself. Now to ensure we've selected our machine correctly in our setup definition, and let's create an NC program and post out the NC code. The post processor has a property called Live Connection. This has to be enabled if you want to be using Live Connection. Also note that you will need the Live Connection running to execute this NC code on the machine tool. The NC code will not run unless Fusion is connected with Live Connection running. We can also see the property data buffer start. This was the start of our 50 macro variables. Ensure this matches what we entered into our machine configuration earlier. We have our NC code on our machine, so we head over to the inspection tab, Actions, Live Connection. We can see the status on our machine connector is green, and the status bar on the Live Connection is ready for cycle start. The program is now running, as indicated by the status bar, and we can see the toolpath that is currently being executed. As this is an inspection toolpath, we will also see the individual inspection points being streamed back in real time. If any points are found out of tolerance, we'll pause the machine and display a message on the controller, alerting the machinist to the issues before we add any more value to a potentially scrapped component. Showing how in-process inspection can prevent hours of wasted work by catching the issue while there still may be time to find a solution. Pressing cycle start on the machine continues past the alarm and it will finish off the cycle. As we can see, indicated by the status bar, the machine cycle has now finished. I can either load the next component in and run cycle start again without having to close the connection, or we can exit the connection and look at the results in more detail. We've now seen where do we get these connectors from, how to set them up for that two-way data flow so you can stay better connected to your machine and know what's happening. Why not watch the follow-up video to this where we're actually going to talk about combining the live connection with part alignment for a more streamlined workflow. As always, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again next time.